1972, the Bureau of Reclamation awarded the contract of the Teton Dam to Maurice Nutson Company of Boris, Idaho. It was located in the Teton Canyon, approximately 71 kilometers northeast of the city of Idaho Falls. The dam is located in the Eastern Snake River Plain, which is a broad tectonic depression on top of rhyolitic ash flow tuff. The tuff, a late Cenozoic volcanic rock dating to about 1.9 million years, sits on top of sedimentary rock. The area is very permeable, but no seepage was noted on the dam itself before the date of the collapse. Chitan Dam was supposed to provide irrigation, electricity, crop prevention, and recreation accessible to the public. It was built by the United States Bureau of Reclamation, which received most of the blame for the collapse. On 5th of June 1976, between 10 to 11 am, the lake appeared at northwest towards right abutment as a dark brown streak on the dam face near the grey bed rock. The lake became even deeper. Muddy water issues out of the hole, about two thirds up the face of the dam and begins to pawn at the toe. The hole in the dam face enlarges upward. Further erosion cut into the bedrock of the abutment. Another brown streak collapses. Hole forms above the main lake, and muddy brown water begins to flood works at the toe of the dam. The lake hole has enlarged greatly, and erosion of the bedrock abutment intensifies. The hole in the dam face continues to enlarge upward near the crest of the abutment. The rush of water increases even more, and the works of the toe are flooded. At 11.57 am, the dam breached. The rush of muddy brown water is violent. Water spills unchecked through the bridge and widens. The flow of water increases as the bridge widens. The flow became uncontrollable. All works at the toe of the dam are completely flooded. Flat water starts to advance across farms and farms lands at Rexburg, Idaho. Resulted in the death of 14 people, 13,000 head of cacti, 20,000 households evacuated, and causing about $100 million to build. When the dam crumbled, it released a tidal wave of 80 billion gallons of water. The flood path was about 10 miles wide and 14 miles long until it drained into the Snake River, which caused flooding for a distance of 70 miles. It causes major disruptions in water supply system and in many villages. A lot of them were left homeless and business suffered. Topsoil was eroded 60 feet or more down to the bedrock. It causes major disruption in water supply system and disruption in many villages. The communities immediately downstream, Rexburg, Sugar City, Roberts and Madison suffered horribly. In Rexburg, thousands of homes and businesses were destroyed. The small community of Sugar City was literally wiped from the riverbank. Communities to the southwest, such as Roberts on the lower section of the Snake River, received significant damage. The dam helped and the flood was over, but acts of valuable topsoil were stripped, cleaning up to the rest of the summer. In Madison, nearly 3,000 homes or more than 70% of the total housing was damaged or destroyed. Estimates of the loss were over $1 billion. Flooding is caused by poor downstream properties and damaged them. As a result, it plays huge economic losses which includes loss of power generation, running super water, irrigation water and recreation. Many years required to replace the structure and for the reservoir to be filled again to the level required for normal operation. Not all consequences need to be negative. In fact, some environmental advocates would point to the gain for some flora and fauna by letting the river run free. Having inadequate design and construction leads to dam failure due to hydraulic piping, hydraulic fracturing, faults with gout curtain, poor site selection, 
and material used are the causes to hydraulic piping, while scheduling and other factors plays a part in the dam failure in other ways. Hydraulic piping is where the water can lift particles of soil into suspension and transport them, forming narrow tunnels. Cracks and easily eroded soil in the dams increase the rate of hydraulic piping. In Titan Dam, hydraulic fracturing is due to inconsistent in compaction techniques and soil conditioning like red seams. In one of the case, the Titan Dam construction used TD-74 dump truck to compact the embankment in Zone 1, the core of the embankment. Records reviewed from compression test shows that compression achievement of 96% standard proto compression and 2% dry of optimal moisture. This is very close to where hydraulic piping failure subsequently occurred. Due to failing of compression test, the compactor was changed to CAT8253 compactor. A much stiffer ridge of fueling was created above the base of the key rail trench after changing to CAT8253B. So, when the reservoir is filled, the compacted loss would have been wetted. The low density losses would be susceptible to hydro compaction. The low density soil sectors and voids are formed. Ground curtains were used under the dam where the foundation would otherwise pass too much slippage. They help in reduction of the slippage to pass through. Cloud curtain acts as a slippage curtain for the dam. However, it has many errors in the design and construction. The rocks in the gout cap were not adequately sealed. The interior review group indicated that the design of Titan Dam depended on the construction of a tight gout curtain as the main defense against reservoir induced seepage, which leads to erosion. In spite of this, the rock under the surface of the core material did not receive appropriate treatment. In 1977, the interior review group reported that the gout curtain could limit seepage to tolerance level but did not consider its height. The dam was designed to be triple gout. However, it turned out to be a single line gout curtain in the construction. Constructing the dam with a single line gout curtain was considered insufficient to protect internal erosion from occurring. Early investigation of the geology of the site showed that the rocks in the area were almost completely of volcanic origin, and large voids associated with volcanic fuma rolls were detected during construction. The conditions of the site favored developments of cracks and also cause arcing which reduces stress in some areas and increases them in others. Having the poor site location had created a risky dam and the wrong choice of materials add on to the problem. The dam was made with materials such as basalt and rhyolite, erected from the area which are easily eroded and deposited. Both materials were used in the field placement. The dam began storing water on 3rd October 1975 with the river outlet works tunnel and the auxiliary outlet works tunnel not yet open, as two sections were incomplete. As a result, the water rises at a rate of 1 meter per day and flows to the top of the reservoir. The rate of rise is higher than the predicted goal rate of 0.3 to 0.6 meters per day for the first year, set by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. But the increased rate was accepted as long as the pitch and water table downstream were measured more frequently. The dam collapsed on 5th June 1976, just as the water behind it was approaching full reservoir capacity for the first time. Other causes of the Titan Dam failure are there weren't enough instruments to check on the soil conditions and the dam has excessively steep side walls which allows hydraulic fracturing. Preventions 